Work it harder, make it better, do it faster, makes us stronger, more than ever, hour after hour, work is never over. Don't be vegan, eat chicken wings and only bone and smoked and seasoned, blue cheese ranch to dip these wings in, no ketchup, you fucking heathen. Bars, ladies and gentlemen, bars, coming to you live on a Wednesday, like the story of the phoenix. All ends with the beginning Getting wild on a Wednesday And we're just celebrating Cause we're just here for good time We're up all night to get lucky We're up all night to get lucky Translation, we're all just trying to get funky We're all really trying to be fucking Everyone, all the time in the club in That's what that's what it's talking about, right? We're up all night for good fun. We're all night to get lucky. That's a translation. That's the explicit version. That's what Daft Punk is trying to say with that song. No one's playing dice at that time. No one's in the club looking like, I want to get lucky like they have their scratching lottery tickets in there. We all know what they're, what they're there for. The kids just trying to dance, bro. Shout out to Dane Cook. I'm just trying to dance tonight, bro. Fuck chicks. Just trying to dance. We're all up. We're all up all night just trying to get lucky. We all went through that club phase, right? A lot of people on Clubhouse now, the app, shout out. But ladies and gentlemen, welcome. We get wild and we get weird on a Wednesday. Wednesday, Wednesday, Wednesday. We got some crazy news, ladies and gentlemen. We got news. Um, not really crazy news. Who gives a shit at the end of the day? Daft Punk has retired. The duo from, I believe, Italy. Am I wrong about that? Am I wrong about that? I believe they're Italian. Is Daft Punk Italian? Hey, where you going? We're, we're going to get to the bottom of this. Uh, oh. <laughs> they are not Italian at all. <laughs> they like the croissants. I need the French fries. Because they are French electronic music duo. <laughs> that's actually why Daft Punk wears their helmets is because that's what they sound like. I'm not being stereotypical here, but that's how aggressive their French accents are. Uh, they're from Paris. <laughs> Enchanté. I want to make electronic music for you today. <laughs> uh, this podcast has gone down the drain, ladies and gentlemen exactly where it should be though but yeah they're a french electronic music duo foam formed in 1993 in paris oh we put on the silly helmets we go on to the americans oh, but hey we can't smoke our little cigarettes if we wear these helmets. Ha ha ha! I have installed this so it looks like some vaporizer have come out. We can smoke cigarettes all day. Ha ha ha! Ah, perfect! Uh. I don't have much of a French accent, if you <laughs> guys can't tell. Um, but that's what the that's what the big news is in the music world is that Daft Punk, and obviously, uh, I'm a huge fan of Daft Punk. Uh, Work it harder, make it better. That's one of my favorite running songs of all time. It's just such a good rhythm of just like, do it better, make the better, don't matter, hour after. And when it starts breaking it down, you're either running, hitting the bag, or jumping rope, okay? That's how your boy use Daft Punk. <laughs> Why is he hitting the bag? He should be smoking a cigarette. <laughs> Stupid. Uh, put down the boxing gloves and pick up a croissant. <laughs> I blame, uh, I can't even blame the Little Mermaid because I just realized that crab was like Jamaican. But I feel like it was like French Jamaican, right? You to think about going down there. Yeah, it's fucking Jamaican. God damn it, Evan. Somebody's French in that movie though, right? It's gotta be. It's gotta be. They're on ships and shit. Anyway, we're getting sidetracked. Daft Punk, when that song, uh, I don't even know what the name of the song is. Is it Make It Better, Do It Faster? Harder, better, faster. Pfft, listen, you already know what they're talking about. You already know what they're talking about. 
Very sexual songs. But what do you expect for the French? A language of love. Enchanté. J'aime jouer à basket. Yeah, I took one year of French, bitches. What's up? J'aime jouer à Evan. No. Je m'appelle Evan. Ha ha. toi. That's one, two, three. This is an educational podcast at the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen. Okay? Um, but Daft Punk, that song, I loved it so much. I've listened to all of Daft Punk's music. And when I, what I mean when I say that is I haven't listened to all of Daft Punk's music because this is one of those bands that everybody is like, oh, I, I listen to their all their, you know, not just their mainstream stuff, you know? Um, but their, uh, was it? Random Access Memory was that their uh, completely acoustic album. I listened to that um, from start to finish over and over and over again um, because it was a live recording, and uh, I love that kind of music. I just had obviously a uh, singer songwriter uh, Robert Quindaro on the podcast last episode. Check it out. Check out his music. And uh, I've always been a fan. Obviously, I've been a fan of music. I started in music. Those are my roots, baby. That's where my roots. I'll still get on there and I'll rip and I'll rap and I'll rap and I'll rip. Bars. Um, but I love the aspect of creating a completely acoustic, especially for an electronic uh, music duo like Da Funk. <laughs> it would be amazing if they came out uh and they just did a skit like that, where it's just like you don't expect them to be like that at all, and they're just so Frenchy. Um, that's one thing about those masks; it probably just smells like croissants the whole time out of there. I abandoned that bit as soon as it started coming out of my mouth, but I had to keep going because I was like, "This is such a stupid joke." Anyway, I don't want to lie to you, and I don't want to water down what we have, ladies and gentlemen. But I love that. If you haven't listened to the album, uh basically ram random access uh memories um it's a great album most of their music is all great uh tron great um i first heard that when i was a kid like beautiful beautiful music um the harder better faster that was like one of my favorite songs and it was like mind-blowing and also that one song when I was a kid, I remember uh, my dad and I, we timed how many times they say one more time. Because it's like, you're kind of lying to us, Daft Punk. Uh, one more time. 144 times. That's how many times they said it, ladies and gentlemen, in that fucking song. Um, just just a little fun fact for you. That's something you find on the back of a, ca- of a Snapple, a French Snapple. You know what I'm saying? Croissant flavored. Croissant and cigarette flavored Snapple. That's what you get in French. In French. In France. Okay? I've never been there. I'm sure it's a nice place. Um, but it is a... It is a... Listen, I... I don't believe that they're retiring. Because they are Daft Punk. They're going to create music in some facet. But here's what I do understand. You got to recreate yourself and do things different, which is why I always love that album. I'm going back to it again. Random Access Memories. It was such a phenomenal. I think it's that album I'm thinking of. Um, It's just such a banger of an album. Acoustically, musically, everything just meshes so well. And the reason why I love that, there's like a, fuck, what is that documentary? It's about uh, these... uh, studio singers so if you don't know when you listen to a lot of like the rock albums in the 80s and everything like that there is uh, studio uh, musicians and a lot of times what they do is they just go in for the recordings of all these albums of some of the greatest hits the greatest rock bands of all times and it was one crew of people that were doing all the music recordings for all these bands because they were just so good in studio. That's like when you go live somewhere, you see a you know a band and you're like, oh, they sound like dog shit. Uh, a lot of times, you know, especially rappers, it can be hard, which is why I respect rappers who can pull it off live, is because it's so different when you when you're not recording uh, bits of the verse uh, in different times, different recordings. A lot of times you hear. Uh, a verse like you listen to let's say Eminem 
he not only does he have a lot of, of layers of vocal like vocal layers on his tracks he might do you know like 50 takes of a verse and then cut different sentences of all those 50 recordings and make the perfect uh delivery of each verse and i don't know if eminem does that but i know that artists do do this and a lot of different vocal inflections and just get the best delivery because you can in a studio but since they're not that good to get it on one time their live performance suffers um, so that's kind of the thing of these studio performers, these that were hired by record labels. Oh, The Wrecking Crew. The Wrecking Crew is the name of the documentary. It's pretty dope. Um, and I had a music teacher in college uh, send it to me. And basically, it's just this badass group of people who were are legends among the music industry for what they did. But they would do all the live recordings for all this, these albums because that's what was so impressive about music being performed back then. A lot, now, every instrument is within a MacBook Pro. I could create any song I want with a MacBook Pro. I never have to touch a single fucking instrument. I don't have to ever touch a goddamn piano or a guitar or some fucking and you have every variation of every instrument so i'm like oh give me a spanish guitar oh give me a cello oh let me do this and you can switch it like it's all just automation i never even have to time it i can input each little thing i can quantize it it's just it's all digitized i don't know if that's a word but um back in the day you couldn't do that which is why that was so impressive because it would actually record on uh tape so they would just run it and they would start recording on the actual tape, so you had to nail it. Um, which is why they say a lot of times, like they'll try to emulate that tape saturation when they're mixing and everything. Listen, I don't know if you guys give a shit about how music is made, but people try to replicate that warm saturation of tape saturation, and they even have plugins and everything to try to replicate that. <clears throat> but getting back to Daft Punk, why that album is so impressive is because they did that. <laughs> they went in and they had live instruments. Everything was live bands. You couldn't tweak this. You couldn't tweak that. You had a, your microphone placement mattered, the gains, everything. And there was mixing, but it's all, it was all done uh, analog, uh, which I just think is so cool. And that's what I'm getting at is I think that uh, a group a duo like that who is so musically inclined and just like that need to create, they'll be back in some facet. They'll be back in some way. You know, I, I think they're just going to figure it out. Maybe, maybe they are done and they're like, you know, we're still going to create music, but we're just going to, you know, do it in some other way. And maybe the band just broke up. We don't even know if that was really them in there, you know, um, but it's the end of an era. It's the end of an era, you know. Rest in peace, Daft Punk. They put out a video on their YouTube, which kind of alluded to it, the epilogue. And it's like this really drawn out video of them out in the desert. Uh, and then they, I don't want to spoil it for you. You haven't seen it, but just go Google Daft Punk epilogue. And it basically is announcing the retirement. Um, but speaking of retirements, ladies and gentlemen, let's move on. We did our bit about Daft Punk. <laughs> May your, you know, whatever you guys decide to do, may your, may your croissants always be cheesy and buttery and your cigarettes always stinky. And may you always be up all night to get lucky. Um, man, clubs are weird. You know what's weird is about clubs? I was going to move on to another thing. I had to touch on this because I saw this. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Reddit Reads. This is a new segment that uh, I'm introducing into the podcast. Your boys sometimes get ideas for the podcast and just news, and I'm just a, a man. I like to browse Reddit. <clears throat> you can find some good shit on there, some funny shit. Uh, I don't know what happened to this article I had. Um, <clears throat> and it was a point that I was like, yeah, that is fucking weird. Um, this question on Reddit said, why do American clubs have people in the toilet who help me wash my hands. And he says, I went to America for my honeymoon and me and the missus went to a club. I went to take a piss. Uh, and after the crowd dissipated and the sink dissipated, I stepped up to wash my hands and some bloke, okay, you cheeky bastard, and some bloke sitting on the basin reached over with a bottle and squirted soap on my hands for me. I didn't know it was soap, so I nearly decked him, but it turns out to be a common thing. Like what? I'm not three for fuck's sake. You know, I should have done this in his accent. 
I didn't know soap, so I nearly ducked him. I was gonna give him one of these. But it turns out, this is a common thing. Like, what? I'm not three for fuck's sake. Why does your job even exist? Well, mate, let me answer this for you. Because Americans like to make money, okay? And this is the weirdest shit. It really is such an odd thing. And I experienced this in my time in the clubs, and in, especially in Puerto Rico. I'd go to a fancy-ass club. Listen, if you're at a club with this, and you're in like an uncharted territory, know that you're going to be okay there. Because you've at least picked the club where there's not someone vomiting or throwing up, or the opposite, doing some cocaine in the stall, you know? But I remember... Like, it's just a weird service thing to make people, I think what it is, is people like the experience of being like, ooh, I'm fancy as fuck. You know, those kind of people who like need to impress other people. It's the same thing. Like, remember, there's a weird service going around where people were hiring paparazzi to follow them, where they just wanted to feel like important. And, you know, in these like tabloids. I don't know if you know this, most tabloid companies and like these gossip and people magazine, it's like the publicists of those people on those magazines sending the information in like, hey, do a story on so and so. It's publicity. And it's so weird. Like TMZ, the tips they get, they're from like the publicist. Like, hey, so and so is going to be here at this time. Ask them about this. And then they're like, blah, blah, blah. Is it true that you're single and you have a new movie coming out? Oh, yes, yes. But that's, I have to go. And it's just all bullshit. Um, I don't know why I made that connection with TMZ. Uh, we got down a rabbit hole, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Rabbit Hole Reddit Reads Bars. We got the name. Um, but I think that's what that is, is to make people feel fancy with the amenities. But a regular bloke like me, I don't need it. I don't want it. Okay. It makes it weird. And you know what else it does? It makes me feel obligated to tip that person because they have their jar of money and they're waiting for their tip. Um, the first time I did it, I was in uh, Bravas. Shout out to Bravas in uh, Isla Verde, Puerto Rico. Mi isla. Mi corazón. Mi todo. Mi sangre. Suavemente playing in the background i walk in and there's a dude just standing there next to the fucking bathroom stall I listen your boy sometimes i'd go to the club early i just like to hang out you know and it was it was just me and him in there i greet him big fella nice dressed to the dressed to the nines as the kids say in a tuxedo um it might have been a dress i don't remember the tuxedo i'm just being dramatic and I go to the bathroom. He greets me first. Hello, sir. How are you? You know, and I'm like, good. Uh, and then, you know, I go to the bathroom. He turns the water on for me, gets the soap out, and then starts getting me paper towels. So he literally puts it in my hand. I'm like, okay. I don't know if you know this, but there's technology to where we can have a sink that, you know, has the soap come out. You put your hands underneath it. And then you put your hands underneath the water. Sensor. Water comes out. I'm sorry, I believe in job security, you know, I get it, but I don't need this. Um, it's like someone reading my text messages for me. Like they were just like standing there like, so-and-so just text you and blah, 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 blah. All right, it's a little over the top, don't need this. It feels like a waste of money. But then the person would like hand me the stuff and then offer me a mint, offer me a little candy, uh, offer me cologne, and then like, Dude, I remember I took the cologne and I was like, okay. He was like, oh yeah, try this. This one's great. And he gave me a little spritz and I was like, this is odd. But here's the problem. I didn't have any money at the time. Okay. Like I didn't have dollar bills on me and I'm not going to give him a 20. And I was like, thank you, sir. I appreciate that. And I walk out and he was cold to me as soon as he saw I was leaving without tipping. Um, I don't know what you want from me. I'm just a college kid looking to have do hood rat stuff with my friends. So then I remember I go back in because listen, your boy drinks a lot of rum and Cokes. My bladder's full, tippity top. You can't have a full bladder when you're on that dance floor, you know, just peacocking. Uh, no pun intended. I go back in. He won't even look at me. He is pissed. 
and he rips the paper towels out for me and just gives them to me and i felt bad you know and then it felt like oh i'm being forced to tip here because now it's awkward and i don't want to come to this bathroom anymore so now i got to dance with a full bladder um and i remember when i started going back to that club i would have dollars because i just didn't want to deal with that awkward engagement and uh yeah, I don't know why it is there. It's such an awkward thing. Clubs in general are weird, okay? They're fun, but there's an underbelly of clubs, and I'm sure I've talked about this before, of just dudes posted up on the wall looking like goddamn hawks and hyenas hunting. I had a friend. I don't know if I've talked about that. I have a friend. I literally would call him the objectifier. Because he would ask me about, because here's the, here's the way, here is a nugget for the young men listening to this. If you are on the prowl and you're not being successful as with women, it's because you're looking at women as this other species than you. I got lucky. I had a lot of girls who were friends growing up. I... Once you, when you're friends with them and you understand these creatures and you're not trying to fuck every girl in your world you become less of a creep you learn how to just socialize and be friends and be fun and that's the secret you can't be so predatory with it okay you can't and this dude i hate the idea of guys when girls aren't into them they completely flip and they're like you're a fucking bitch anyway dude she's a fucking bitch you don't want to like maybe you're just being weird dude okay and i'm a manimist i'm no white knight at the end of the day okay but it's like dudes can sometimes just be so ridiculous um with their game and it's just like you just gotta be friends with women and you can't you can't you can't be so aggressive with it all right you just gotta be friends okay have fun not everything's about getting lucky okay and listen when you do what you love and you love what you do you put in the work okay you just you you play the game you don't look to score but listen you put in the hard work and, and practice you put in the hard work and practice and the wins come baby that's the way it works okay don't be so needy don't be a hawk on the club wall just looking for a victim because listen if there's one thing that girls have over guys is their awareness to vibes and body language the guys are hyenas and we're so stupid when it comes to that kind of stuff that we don't realize that we're like trying to be all like what's up what's up i'm a fucking alpha what's up what's up and like being the so like girls know they just pick up on it they're like okay this dude's just trying to uck and i'm not down for it sometimes girls just want to have a good time they just want to dance for a bit you gotta be okay with that he's go, all right cool i'm just here having a good time that was my move ladies and gentlemen i'm gonna let you in a little how it used to work for your boy i just was there for a good time you go to the dance floor you start dancing by yourself you start having a good time just moving all around doing some of these finger guns in all the directions and they just come baby okay because you're just there for a good time all right you're not trying to overcommit. all right some dudes are like are we doing this are we fucking doing this you're fucking mine dudes are creepy man dudes are creepy that whole environment though but listen here's the flip side guys who are looking for a relationship welcome to life advice with evan lopez guys looking for a relationship don't go to the club don't go to the club don't go out seeking a person in a place that you never would normally go because don't try to find love in the club who is it usher said that usher said a lot of shit dun, 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 dun. but listen you want to meet someone nice this goes this is universal advice you go places that you enjoy going you like going to yoga go to broga all right Go to Broga, my bro, okay? Because you're going to meet people that have similar interests, all right? Why go to a club and have to compete in the most primal situation, which is weird? And listen, if you go there for love, I've, I've been there with friends who were like, I just need to forget about her, okay? I'm just going to 
fuck that bitch. I'm just going to fucking forget about her. I'm going to hit the club and I'm going to look at me, bro. I'm a fucking alpha. Any girl will be lucky. And they're like wearing a dress shirt that's like unbuttoned too much, way too much cologne. Just desperation. They're trying to fill a void. And there's nothing more sad than when it doesn't work out for them. At the end of the night, they're drunk. They're sad. They got less money. They were rejected all night. It's a sad place to be. You got to go do things you enjoy. I feel like the blueprint is already out there now. You go to the gym. I feel like dating apps. I never really, I never have done a dating app. Um, my fiance doesn't let me. I'm unsupportive. Um, but I feel like you can just narrow down results. All right. I, I feel like you can just narrow it down to your interests. But obviously people are going to lie. People lie all the time about that, right? Where you just like put on a fake front of what you do. It must be hard to date during quarantine, um, because you can't. You would. You have to. You have to like commit to it, right? But I mean, you could go to a public place and you're just like walking on the beach and shit. Yeah, it's just a weird time to date. Sorry, guys and gals. But just don't go to the club. I don't even know if clubs are open right now. Moving on. This is what I was going to talk about. The end of another era. Fry's Electronics is closing, ladies and gentlemen. Fry's Electronics. I don't know if you know about Fry's Electronics. If you don't, she's too young, bro. Okay? Fry's Electronics was a staple in my life growing up. It's an electronic store, obviously. And they got a little bit of everything in there. But you know what it also is? It's just a dope ass store to walk through. If you haven't looked at some of the Fry's electronics themes, the stores that have themes to them, you ain't lived, bro. You ain't lived. I remember I've been to, there was Mars Attacks where they have the whole store set up like Mars Attacks. We're talking multi-thousand dollar developments, okay? Went into designing this. We're talking at least 100K. All right, three, three, six figures, three figures, stupid. Six figures going into designing some of these fries. Alice in Wonderland, I've seen that one. I've seen a few of them and they were always so dope. And honestly, I knew it was a matter of time before fries was closing. Obviously the internet was killing it, but I've walked through fries probably twice in the last six months. It is depressing. I don't know if you've walked through one, but when you do, it's like Mad Max. You feel like you're in the apocalypse. There's The last time I went, I was the only customer in the store. And I was like, what are you guys doing in here? Like, And I'd just like walk by employees and they'd be just sitting in a gaming chair, just thinking about how they ended up at Fry's. Like they're just waiting. Like they look like they're in purgatory. And they're just like, people used to shop here, but now they don't. There's dust on the walls and shit and on the shelves. There's some like aisles that just don't have anything in it. And it's just like, this place is over. It had its run. It's sad, but it is what it is. Okay. We're moving on. The world moved past fries and I'm sad about it. I'm sad about it. I feel like, you know. I hope they have some deals right now. But it was such a great place. I just wish they could have changed with the times. Listen, electronics and gaming, the gaming industry is booming beyond belief. There has to be a way that you can, you know, market that way. Go online. I just don't want to lose fries. I don't know why I'm emotionally attached to them. I used to just love when I was a kid, like anywhere we were with my parents where it was like we were in a different city or a state or somewhere and I saw fries. I'd be like, fries! and I'd make them take me to fries and like I just want to walk through and be like what theme is it and there's a couple that aren't themes and I'm like you guys should have bought me dinner before you fucked me like this okay should have bought me dinner at least take me on a date but it's sad what else we got this is something that uh, it's almost old news now but it's something that's Ridiculous that we, we should at least talk about Ted Cruz, the senator of Texas. During a Texas freeze, this man in a public position 
decided to take his family to Cancun. I understand you got to be a family man. And you're a bitch for leaning on that excuse. You threw your own family under the bus, you piece of shit. At the end of the day, at least, at least just say what you're doing. At least just man up and own it. Because I'll respect that. Say that, you know, I wish, you know, my judgment could have been better, but... And say, starts giving the excuses. Well, my kids, you know, they haven't been out of school. And they were asking me, like, Dad, can you, you know. And, and he got caught. So he went to Cancun. People saw his ticket. People saw him at the airport. Started blowing him up on Twitter. He saw it. Took the first flight back from Cancun to Texas. And then started doing all these photo ops of helping different places in Texas. Which, listen. He can't win no matter what he's doing right now. I lost a lot of respect for Ted Cruz when he let Donald Trump say so much shit about his wife and then he started just suckling on the Donald Trump tea. Just, well, you know, it is what it is. He looks like he's made of Capri Suns. It's an odd reference. But he just... He, he just looks weaselly to me. He looks like he gets prostitutes. I'll say that right now. But he looks like he gets them to just like pour cottage cheese all over him. I hope this doesn't backfire on me. <laughs> um, but it's just gross. I, but here's the flip side. Me being a realist and at least trying to be a realist. Um... I also am in the position of like, what was he supposed to do? Ted Cruz. Was he supposed to get out there with uh, some, you know, wood and try heating up the atmosphere? Like, what could he have done at that time? I get it looks bad. Uh, I almost like, I think about what I would have done in that position. And I probably wouldn't have gone to Cancun because I know what it would look like. It's like the boss of a job when things are overwhelmed and they won't help, you know. I have a buddy, lives in Texas, good guy. Because of the Texas freeze, they were overwhelmed. My buddy is a manager of a warehouse. And because of the freeze, they were understaffed and they needed to get out more uh, shipments out. He didn't stay in his office and just keep doing his administrative work like he could have done. Nah, he rolled up his he rolled up his sleeves and he got to work to help his workers load up the truck, picking things, all the things that they had to do. Because that's what you just do when you're a leader. If anything, it's good for camaraderie. It's good for the team. Now Ted Cruz, he's just a center. I don't know what he's supposed to do in that situation, but it just doesn't look good that while your people are suffering. You just, you know, hey guys, you guys, good luck, but I'm going to Cancun, Margaritas, hola, you know, um, it just doesn't look good. I feel like you just got to give people leadership in that, in that situation, but I'm also not like, it's not that big of a thing to me, you know, it could be worse, um, but he can't win with these uh, photo ops and everything he's doing. Now people are dragging him for that, you know? Now people are dragging him for that. And that leads me to another thing is you can't win Twitter. This is like something that whenever I want to feel super toxic, I just go on Twitter. When I'm feeling too good about myself, let's go on Twitter. Let's just read some shitty comments. Um, No matter what you do, this is why I don't think I'll ever really be active on Twitter. You're just going to have hateful people. Okay. You can't win. You can't lose. No matter what, people are just terrible on Twitter. And that's where I like read about the Ted Cruz stuff. And I'm like, dude, people are so toxic. Um, We'll end on this note, ladies and gentlemen. We're giving you a longer one today. Not really. Not really. This just came out. And this is something that I've been thinking about. Like, or not thinking about, but it just makes sense. There was a new medical study that pizza, a nutritionist says... Pizza is better for breakfast than most cereals. I'm going to say that again. Pizza is better for breakfast than most cereals. Now, if you think of like eggs and bacon and all that stuff, 
Yeah, that's a hearty stuff. But there's no sugar, okay? There's no sugar in that. This is why, I listen, my brother would always say, sugar is the devil. Sugar's the devil. He'd also say cheese is the devil. But you know your boy likes to on some cheddar every now and then. But sugar is so bad for you. And it's insane. Like this has been my whole thing with COVID. People don't want to take accountability with their health. People don't want to change their diets. These cereals are not set up for you to win. There are some cereal with like 15 grams of sugar. And guess what? They all taste delicious. You get some Captain Crunch around your boy when he was like 12 years old. Oof, gone. You better got that family pack. And if you get those blueberry blast, ooh, gonna turn your shit blue. I'll tell you that right now from experience, all right? Weird shit happens when you eat that many blueberry blasts, all right? I feel like Captain Crunch owes me a fucking severance pay for that shit, literally. And also severance pay for what the the Captain Crunch does to your mouth. That is like eating sandpaper cereal. Just, (laughs) but it's so good. And it's like one of those things where, you know, when like a badger gets his hand stuck in a thing, it's because I can't slow down. I'm not going to responsibly eat Captain Crunch, okay? But this has been my thing with COVID is obviously this is crazy that cereal is worse for you, but we know this. Like, people have to take care of themselves. Eat pizza for for breakfast, ladies and gentlemen. You like how I remix that? For breakfast. Um, But yeah, that's been my thing with COVID is I'm like, listen, we're coming up on a year here, and I do have a special video planned for the anniversary of COVID, COVID's birthday, if you will. Coming up on a year, your boy has been very good with quarantining, wearing masks, Staying in, whatever I got to do, washing hands. Part of the thing for me is I gave y'all a year. I'm giving y'all a year, okay? And then guess what? Your boy's out of quarantine. I gave y'all a year to exercise and eat your Flintstones. Once that year, once that year starts, once that year is over, Hunger Games, baby. May the odds ever be in your favor. It's going to be, I'm going to start, like I did my quarantine like counting down from 365 where I was just like one, two, three, 365, ready or not, here I come. Hope you all ate your vitamins. That's how I feel about it. May the odds ever be in your favor, ladies and gentlemen. And you know what? It's been a good week, ladies and gentlemen. A lot of news, a lot of stuff coming up, big changes. We're going to Teja soon, all right? We're going to Teja soon. The podcast is going to be changing a little bit in the move. But by the end of the year, I can promise you this. there's a be, The podcast will be on a different level. I promise you that. New things, big things coming, ladies and gentlemen. And I just want to, again, thank everybody who listens to this podcast, Okay. Because without you, there's no me. I mean, at least not with a podcast. But I just want to thank you. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe to the podcast if you haven't been. All the new listeners uh, from Amazon Music, thank you for listening. I don't know if it's the same listeners that are just now listening on Amazon Music. Thank you for being here. And we're just going to keep the party rolling, baby. The show goes on. And remember, no matter what, I still love you.